Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Yesterday in my Facebook group I asked if anyone had any unloved dies, dies that they bought but had never really used and I said I would have a look through my stash to see if I had anything similar that I could use in a video in the hopes of you know sharing some ideas. So a couple of people posted that they had some creative expressions dies they're not exactly the same as these, but they're along the same lines. And I had a look through my stash and found quite a few. So these are the ones that I've got from Creative Expressions that are along similar lines to the ones that were shared in the group. So some of them are just apertures. I don't know if there's a bit missing from these, but I bought these from a charity shop. All of these actually from a charity shop. So some of them might have bits missing. But these just cut apertures, whereas these cut apertures, but they've also got an outline. Uh, so you can make them into die cuts as well as apertures. But I've chosen this one to work with today because it was the closest that I had to the dies that were shared in my Facebook group. If you want to join in with the discussions in the Facebook group, check out the description box below because there's a link there. So for this one, I've got a four and a half by six and a half panel. It's going to go on a five by seven card. I thought I would cut my aperture out of the side rather than the middle. I want there to be plenty of white space to keep this clean and simple. But if you're more of a, a middle aperture person, then go for that. But I thought I'd have about a third of it hanging off and line it up. So this little bit here is on the edge and then that little bit there can be on the edge so that it's perfectly aligned. I'm going to hold that down with a sticky note and then this bit comes from the middle so I'm going to pop that in again align it with the edge. Did I get that right? I don't think I did. No I've made that a bit wonky. I've there we go, I think I might have jogged it or didn't line it up properly in the first place. There we go, so now that is properly aligned. And then this one is going to go centrally in there like that. But for this, I'm going to use slightly stronger tape, this masking tape, because I want to make sure this and this stay aligned in exactly the same spot so that I can cut multiples of this die cut if I want to. So at the moment it's about creating an aperture in the panel but I will want some dies or die cuts rather that that look the same so I want I want to keep everything where it should be. So I'll, I'll run that through my cuttle bug. Before I run it through my cuttle bug though, my die cutting machine, I'm going to make sure that I protect my panel from all the scratches in my cutting plates by putting a bit of paper over it. So we can peel this off now. I'm using linen textured cardstock for my card panel because it's quite forgiving. Even if you do get a few dents and scratches in it from the cutting plate or from the dies, uh, it doesn't show particularly because it's already quite textured. So there are my die cuts and my panel. What I'm going to do before I move on is just go and cut two or three more of these so that I've got something to work with in a minute. So that's everything cut out. I've got multiples of all the bits. Some of them didn't cut perfectly, but that's okay. I only need one perfect one for this because I'm gonna do some in inlaying and stacking, I think. So only one of them actually needs to be perfect. The rest can be a bit raggedy because that will be hidden. I have a bit of mixed media paper here and that is going to go behind the aperture and I think I'm going to use luscious powders today to give it a really lovely shimmery look. To stick my luscious powders down I'm going to cover my mixed media paper, actually this doesn't need to be mixed media, it could be any card because I'm not adding any water to it. I'm going to cover the whole card, most of it anyway, in this Zig two-way glue pen. That'll give me some bits to play with. 
So it says on here, wet bond, long lasting bond. When applying for a long lasting bond, use when glue is blue and wet. If you want a temporary bond, in a few moments, it turns clear after driving, giving, driving, drying, giving a temporary bond. And that's what I want for adding luscious powders and gilding flakes. I want it to go clear. Doesn't matter if it's streaky. I'll just add to the effect. So before adding anything else to it, I want to wait for it to go clear. Can give it a bit of a help with the hair dryer, but I don't want to heat it too much. Okay, so that's pretty much clear, pretty much dry. The first thing I'm going to do is add some gilding flakes. And just drop them on. I'm not going to press them down yet. Now I've got some luscious powders here, lovely sparkly pigment powders. This is crushed velvet and this is raspberry jam. So I'm going to pop some on each colour here and there and these will spread out in a minute. Now I'm going to use my fan brush brush this all around a bit, press down the gilding flakes a little bit. I'm going to have to add some more luscious powders to cover up all of the glue, but we'll just do it gently to start with. Okay, so I think that's all the glue covered up. Just going to give everything a wipe to get rid of any excess powder because I don't want that sticking to things at later stages. And now I've got this little bit of sponge and I'm going to go over my gilding flakes quite gently because I don't want to disturb the glue beneath. And this just burnishes them down flat onto card and makes them lovely and shiny. So there's a couple of places where the glue hadn't quite gone clear and it's still wet so it's lifting off and that's okay because I don't need the whole of this piece. Now I can choose which bit I want peeking through. The whole thing is not going to peek through. I'm going to pop my die cuts back in. I just want a nice piece it hasn't got any big splurges of glue on it. I think that one will do. So we will cut there and about there. So ordinarily, when I put some mixed media behind an aperture, I put some craft foam around it so there's a bit of separation, but I'm not going to do that today. Today, I'm going to create some dimension in a different way. So I'm going to add some glue on the back of this and I can get my glue bottle working and add it straight on and line it up there. And I'm going to press it down with a bit of deli paper on top to protect everything. And there we have our background. So now for a bit of inlaying so this is the one that i cut from this panel and i think this is the best of the bunch so i'm going to put that back in there like that and then add another one and then add another one so I've got some dimension. There's a bit of difference between this and that. So I've got some tacky glue. Just pick that up, wipe it down to get the excess off the top that's splurged through. 
and pop it in there these creative expressions i don't know what you call them they're not quite mandala but they're a bit like that they they seem quite um symmetrical so i'm not worrying about trying to line everything up perfectly uh you know finding the rotation as it were because they seem to fit whichever way you put them in so that's one there and that's a nice bit of that one so we get that lined up as best we can that looks good oh no it doesn't i was talking nonsense wasn't i there we go no ah i know why like that no So forget everything I just said about them lining up perfectly. They do, but because I inserted a, another die in the middle, uh, they are not quite aligning. So what I want is some glue on the bottom of this one. So that's my top layer. If I hadn't cut another die from the middle, that would have worked. <laughs> so what I want to do is find the right spot. That looks like it, where it's all lined up properly. Let's get that in there. I need to clean my fingers because they're a bit gluey and I don't want glue all over my top layer. Now I can pick next layer and get that lined up there we are now I can add this because it's three layers deep to my background and it doesn't matter that I've made a mess of it because this the messy bits going to be covered up There we go. So I need to snip these bits off here. So it's probably best to wait until the glue has had a chance to dry before you do your snipping. Now for the middle bit. Okay, I've got one, two, three, four, plus the top one here, five. So this one's gonna be five deep. We'll start with the top one and line it up and work my way down the stack. It's helpful to keep a baby wipe to hand to wipe gluey fingers, I find, when doing something like this. So now that's ready to go in my aperture here. Again, I'm going to press that down whoops, with some deli paper, give everything a good press down. So I've got quite a stack there and I'm going to wait until this is dry before cutting that off so I don't mess up the edge. I might tr get my trimmer out and trim just a couple of millimetres off just to get a really lovely straight line through all the different layers there. What might be better, and I think I'll give this a try, is to use a sharp craft knife and a metal ruler. So I think that might cope with all the different layers better, but I'm gonna leave that to dry for a bit before I attempt anything further. For my sentiment, I've cut two banners using the same banner die, this one here. I've got one in linen textured cardstock and one from the bit that was left over from my background and I'm going to use this as a drop shadow for this and I'm going to add my sentiment using this stamp it says thinking of you and I think it fits perfectly and because I've never used this stamp before I'm going to go over it with a sand eraser the rough end of this eraser and that just keys the surface of the stamp a bit and helps it to take the ink better 
and that's especially important if you're using a silicon stamp or acrylic stamp like this rather than photopolymer some photopolymer stamps stamp beautifully right out of the uh, gate and i'm going to use a microfiber cloth to dust off the bits of eraser and then we will stamp it i'm using black ink so it stands out well. And it's a little bit patchy in places, so I'll give it a second go. That's because of the linen texture. It's got lots of dips in it. Yeah, that'll do. Any super patchy bits, not that there aren't it are any, but I could just go in with a black pen and go over any white spots that are showing through. Now that's done, I'm gonna pop some glue on the back and add that to my purple banner, purple and gold, pinky purple and gold, there we go. I'll just chop that where I want it chopped. we can use those to bump up the end pop that on there line it up with the edge I just use my t-square ruler to make sure the writing is straight it doesn't matter what angle the banner's at but the writing needs to be straight, I think. And now I'm gonna use, even though the label's a bit wet, we'll just see how we get on. I'm gonna use a craft knife, sharp craft knife, and a metal edge ruler. So I can use the grids on my glass mat here to get everything lined up square. I'm cutting on my glass mat because this is a toughened glass mat and it can handle uh, being cut on. It won't damage the surface at all. The trick when cutting through multiple layers of things is to cut gently. It's better to do lots of lots of shallow cuts than one deep cut. get through it eventually and get a nice edge. So I've got a quarter inch corner positioner here which should be about right for this card. Yep that looks good. Give my panel a beveled edge, make it look a bit more polished. I'm going to run round it with an embossing tool I'm not going to worry about this too much up here. And to bring a bit more of the purple to the foreground, I'm going to add a few enamel dots in this purple here. You can always use these to cover up any bits that didn't quite work for you, or you might have got a blemish or something. These finishing touches can be quite handy for that kind of thing. And I'm just wondering about adding a little bit of banner just here. No stamping or anything, but just something there to kind of create a bit of a diagonal flow. What do you think? With, without. I feel like an optician. With, without. Hmm, good question. I'm thinking with. So I'm just going to stick that straight down. Let me know what you think in the comments, with or without. But I rather like that with. Right, I think this card is done. I hope you've picked up some ideas on how to maybe use this style of die. If you have, do have a go. Come along to the Facebook group, share a picture so we can all see what you've made and we can all garner some ideas on 
how to use this kind of thing. So if you'd like to see more from me, do all the good things, subscribe, like, comment, click bells, what have you, and I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.